The UN climate talks in Lima have been extended into Saturday to try and reach an agreement after Friday's deadline passed. The deadlock is attributed to the lack of an agreement between rich and poor countries. Lower income countries claim richer nations are trying to eliminate differentiated responsibilities, which hold rich countries accountable for climate change, as they have polluted over a much longer period. Poor countries are also demanding funding from rich countries to help adjust to a low carbon economy. In a previous UN conference, the Green Climate Fund was announced, promising 100 billion US dollars a year, but only 10 billion US dollars has been committed, far short of the stated goal. Major protests against police brutality are expected Saturday across the United States. They conclude a week of outrage following two recent grand jury decisions not to indict police officers responsible for the deaths of two unarmed black men. Tens of thousands will join protests, including the relatives of victims Michael Brown and Eric Garner, as well as prominent civil rights leaders. Those two killings have focused international attention on the racist policing in the U.S., with worldwide protests using the slogan, I can't breathe, the last words of Eric Garner, who died in a police chokehold. Revelations continue to unfold from the U.S. Senate report on the CIA's detention and torture program. The latest disclosures reveal that of the 119 detainees, at least 26 were wrongfully held by the U.S. spy agency, even by that agency's own standards. Some of those mistakenly held were because of errors over their names. Others were held after their names were falsely given under CIA torture. Meanwhile, pressure continues to mount for the prosecution of those involved in the torture. Edward Snowden's lawyer is the latest, calling on Europeans to prosecute U.S. torture architects. So far, the U.S. government has not revealed plans to try and court those responsible for these crimes. Hugo Chavez Frias had only just been released from prison on December 14, 1994, when he would travel to Havana Airport, Cuba, to meet with Fidel Castro, leader of Latin America's most iconic revolution. It was a friendship that would go on to play an integral role in uniting the Latin American continent. The relationship between Fidel and Chavez was an extremely close friendship, and it opened the door for the whole world. Fidel was Chavez's teacher. Chavez would describe Fidel as a father figure, and the relationship would eventually be the springboard for the creation of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our Americas, or the ALBA, formed between Cuba and Venezuela exactly 10 years after the historic meeting between the two leaders. It was at this moment that the two governments signed an agreement allowing for the direct exchange of medical resources and personnel for oil. Since then, the ALBA has gone on to include six other members, including Bolivia and Nicaragua. It focuses on promoting reciprocal exchange between member states, prioritizing solidarity mechanisms which favor less developed members, and breaking with the competition which drives free trade agreements. This ALBA shop is one of those initiatives. Aimed at promoting fair trade, the majority of the clothes here are manufactured in Cuba or Bolivia and sold at up to 70% discount prices in Venezuela. It's fitting for us to come together and make a collective effort amongst ourselves for us all to advance and benefit from what is being carried out. As member states celebrate the 10th anniversary of the ALBA, political observers say the regional bloc's importance is still yet to be fully recognized. Arnold August, author of Cuba and its Neighbors, Democracy in Motion, describes the organization as the building block for other regional integration bodies such as the community of Latin American and Caribbean states. Organizations which would have been unthinkable without the willingness of Chavez and Castro to invent as opposed to follow revolutionary blueprints. And what they have in common is that they're both anti-dogmatic. They are able to think. They are able to analyze concrete conditions in their respective countries and work out definite concrete plans how to be, make, bring about successful changes in their respective countries. To date, the ALBA is perhaps the most symbolic organization of the changes to have taken place in Latin America in the past decade, an attempt to realize Simon Bolivar's dream of regional integration and simultaneously rally against the historic economic legacy left by colonialism and free trade. Rachel Boothroyd for Telesur in Caracas, Venezuela. In a mass held to honor the patron saint of Mexico and the Americas, Pope Francis has called Latin America the world's continent of hope. 
The Argentine Pope hosted a meeting of popular movements in the Vatican in October. He has often attacked the global economic system for failing to share wealth. We feel compelled to ask that the future of Latin America be forged for the poor and those who suffer, for the humble, those who hunger and thirst for justice, for the compassionate, the pure of heart, those who work for peace. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry expressed support Friday for the ongoing peace process between the Colombian government and the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. Kerry praised Colombian President Manuel Santos's efforts, but also called to speed up the process. The support was welcomed by the Colombian president. Peace talks resumed earlier this month with hopes for a long-term deal through the 50-year civil war. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Tell us, sir, wherever the news, you'll be there.